right folks, if you haven't already guessed it, I'm tearing down the X2 engine. I'm going to check the compression before I take it apart. And several videos ago I checked the compression with my old compression gauge, which was really cheap when I got it. I'm going to check it with this gauge again before I pull it apart so that I know what changes I've made when I get it back together. So let's get to it. About 150 PSI. Less than half an hour into making this video and I've already had my GoPro Hero 7 mess up twice on me. First it was the screen. It was giving this weird uh, blotchy look on the back. I'll try to insert a clip from my iPhone here. Hey, check out what my GoPro is doing. And uh, now it just seized up on me. So yeah, 145, 150 on the compression on this one as well. So. Next, I'm gonna remove some of the cooling hoses and the exhaust. I'm gonna need to remove the exhaust to get the cylinder off anyway. And I wanna pull all this stuff out of the way so that I give myself more room to work. Hey, Joel, what's going on? Not bad, how are you? Going to ride your jet ski. We got back from riding jet ski a couple hours ago. What did you do today? I saw you were playing in a bouncy castle. Did they buy that or rent it? Oh, they have. They owned it. Oh. For a I while. Just, oh. What's this thing? That's to hold the gas tank in. I found a loose water fitting. That's not good. Next, out of curiosity, I'm going to pop the cylinder head off and see if the Permatex sealant has been holding up or if it's been leaking at all. One of the theories as to why this has been working funny is a leaking head gasket. YouTube so I'm not ashamed to say that uh, I do have a problem and I was leaking compression in a whole bunch of places so that's kind of good news really because the X2 was still working as good as it was even with uh, some major leakage issues. Basically every single uh, water chamber leaked so I will say that uh, for many years I've used Loctite 515 and never had any trouble with it in liquid cooled engines. Uh, they were all running antifreeze. I used it in VMAX 4s, in exciters, also used it in some air cooled engines like phasers, used it in a couple of different Polaris engines and uh, never had any issues with the Loctite 515. Uh, ran up over 180 PSI, uh, 200 PSI in a few machines. And yeah, some that were being uh, stressed quite high. So yeah, the Loctite 515 held up extremely well. This is the Permatex brand. I forget what the number is on it, but uh, I have the Loctite stuff, which is the... I think 510 or 511, I forget. I'll check my toolbox. Okay, I was wrong with both of those numbers. It's 518, so yeah. I'm going to wager that basically what's going on here, I'm gonna guess that because of the casting design of it, it changes shape and uh, allows, yeah, some leak by here. And that's probably why they use such a thick head gasket from the factory. And that's probably also why so many manufacturers offer either a copper gasket, an aluminum gasket, uh, or a bunch of other solutions. So 
So I think this is a really good argument for running a dual cooling system, but running one of the cooling lines so that it only cools the uh, engine and then another one for the exhaust specifically. That way you have two different pissers coming out at the front. One of them indicates whether or not you have flow through your engine and the other one indicates whether or not you have flow through your exhaust. If I would have had it the other way, uh, I would have known that I had a leak in my head. I would have known that I had a leak basically between compression and uh, the cooling jackets. So, all right, YouTube, the cylinder is ready to come off. Let's see how hard it is to get off. Super easy. Well, so far, am I gonna get clearance? Mm. Is that you? Alrighty. It doesn't look really, really bad. Let's put it that way. There are some heat scuff marks for sure. Nothing that a quick hone won't take care of. Time to eliminate this base gasket and bump up some compression. I'm in the middle of editing this video and I realized that the GoPro had seized and I lost the clip of testing the big end bearing on the crankshaft. So the next clip you're going to see me talking about uh, how I can't modify my engine fully because the uh, crankshaft has some play. I basically grabbed the rod and was moving it around and yeah, I can hear there's some play in the big end bearing. Uh, a few videos back, uh, when we were camping, I was trying to set up the carburetor on the back of the truck while the X2 was in the water, and I mentioned with text on the screen that the engine was making a noise. <laughs> and that it would be for another video. Well, this is that video, and uh, yeah, the lower bearing looks like it has some play in it. Uh, so, thanks GoPro. All right, YouTube, it is the next day, and I have cleaned up the cylinder, honed it out, uh, cleaned off the surface on the head, cleaned up the combustion chambers, and a few other little things. And then a couple of videos, you've probably heard me say that I was going to use a single layer of the head gasket. If anybody was paying attention, they may have been confused about that. I'm used to working on Yamahas. I worked on Yamahas for a lot of years, and basically they had three layer head gaskets. And generally they would have one thicker layer in the center, and then basically something like this on either side. And all three were riveted together on the outside of the cylinder head. And they had this, whatever this silicone coating or whatever is on the outside of the gasket. So if you wanted to bump up your compression a little bit, you could actually drill out the rivets and just use one of the layers or two of the layers. It is only one layer, so I'm going to be using this. It's only 10 thousandths thick, and I'm removing 40 thousandths of base gasket. This will be taking me to 30 thousandths squish. And I actually could be getting myself in a whole lot of trouble here. Based on how much play I seem to have in the bottom end bearings, if I only have 30 thousandths, then I could get into a situation where my pistons actually start hitting my head. I should shut up now. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the head on the cylinder, torque everything down, and then that is going to stay together. And then I'm going to put the cylinder back on the engine dry uh, without any sealant on the bottom, check my squish, and then if it's reasonable, I will take it back apart, put some sealant on there, and put it back together. If the squish is too small, then I may have to make a base gasket and assemble it that way. I almost overlooked telling you guys one thing, and that is I'm going to be using this gasket uh, if it gives me problems, if I have more leakage, 
Then what I'm going to be doing is cutting O-ring grooves in the head. And I will probably not actually use O-rings. What I'll probably do is use a piece of solid copper wire. And, uh, but yeah, hopefully the head gasket takes care of any kind of inconsistencies and uh, we don't have any leakage. I'm gonna put the head on. Put the washers on. All right, YouTube, it is once again another day. I am doing this during my regular work days and I actually have been working a little bit. So uh, I think I said earlier in this video already that uh, I was concerned about the big end bearing play. And so I almost ordered a new crank last night, but I decided what I'm going to do is actually take the engine out and set up my dial indicator and see if I can measure the big end play without taking the engine completely apart without pulling the crank out basically it's going to give me a chance to look at a few other things that i wanted to look at anyway so uh i'm not going to show you guys this part because yeah it's kind of boring and it's hard to film so i will see you guys when the engine is out all right youtube in an effort to try to check my bottom end play i took the reeds out and I found something that is definitely 100% affecting my mid-range power. Um, I don't know if any of you remember, but when I was installing the reed valves, I made sure to point out that there is a proper way to install them and an improper way to install them. When these fiber reeds are laminated, they cure with a slight curve to them. And that's not a problem as long as you know about it. All you need to do is hold it against your reed cage. And in my case, the way that I'm holding it down, I can see that it's bending out. I doubt the camera can pick up on this, but it's slightly out from the uh, reed cage. So all I need to do is flip it around this way and put the screws in from this side and it'll have a nice tight seal. I'm not sure what happened because I was very careful to put them in properly. Apparently these Carbon Tech reeds changed shape uh, after using them for a little bit because you can quite clearly see on the top, you can actually see light through these reeds. They're not closing all the way. That is going to affect my low end for sure. All right, YouTube, I've been racking my brain all night trying to figure out how to test the big end clearance on uh, my engine without pulling it apart. If I test it and it's bad, really bad, then I may be having to rebuild or replace the crank. And if it's just a little bit bad, then maybe I'll run it some more uh, before getting some pieces. So anyway, basically what I came up with was this. I have a 10 millimeter wrench. The size isn't very important, but it has to be able to fit between the crank webs. I have the piston at top dead center, and I basically have the wrench so that it is pushed against the bottom of the connecting rod. And so when I push down on the wrench, the intake opening is acting as a fulcrum. So basically the wrench is pushing up on the rod when I push down on this end. So get in there underneath. And so what I can do is push down on the piston and that will basically take up any play that is in the big end of the rod and you'll actually hear it knocking back and forth.
So the noise that you're hearing there is the play in the bottom end bearing. So okay, I got sidetracked. Basically what I'm gonna do is build an adapter so that I can drop the dial indicator in through the plug hole. Then I will push the piston all the way up with the 10 millimeter wrench. And then I will use the plunger on the top of the dial indicator to push down and see how far it moves before it makes the clunk noise. All right, YouTube, that's gonna have to wait for the next video because this one's already getting a little bit long. So in the next video, I will build that tool and test the big end bearing clearance. Hopefully it's okay and I can pop this thing back together. Uh, so far in this video, I found out that there's a leaky fitting on the exhaust, leaky reed valves, a leaky head, and possibly loose bottom end bearings. I should probably explain myself a little bit so you guys don't think I'm a complete hack. The reason why the water fitting was loose on the exhaust is because I purposely left some powder coating in the threads hoping that it would seal up, kind of as a test. Turns out that it didn't work out because the powder coating actually broke free from the threads and just got spit out. So I've put Teflon back on that, popped it back together, and it's good to go. The head gasket... Either it's because I used a different stuff, the Permatex, or because the heads uh, basically change shape a little bit too much to use something uh, like a glue. It's actually not recommended to use the Permatex as a gasket in that way, but I've done it lots, as I said in the video, with uh, Loctite 515 in the past and had really good luck, so I thought I would give it a go here should be perfectly fine with the single layer gasket that I'm using now. The reed valves, you'll have to wait till the next video to see what happened there, but uh, it actually wasn't sort of my fault, but you'll see in the next video. And the big end bearing clearance, basically what happened was this machine sat for about 10 years. So it had about two thousandths clearance in it, which is, within spec and I put it together. I'm not sure if there was some pitting in there that loosened it up, but uh, I did check the crank when it was apart. Um, I'm not sure if it's loosened up more now or if I'm just being paranoid about it. But anyway, we're gonna check that. And so yeah, all that is gonna be in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.